Thank you, Jaiko. Next, I will introduce Farida Igbadume. Farida is a graduating senior in, with a psychology degree and a sustainability certificate. Additionally, Farida serves as the project management intern with the Office of Sustainability. After graduation, she plans to pursue a master's in urban planning. Farida, where'd she go? There she is. <laughs> Avidoya, that's my sister's middle name. It's a word in Yoruba, my mother's native tongue, that roughly translates to say, your destiny will always wait for you. No one can deny you of it. That's a philosophy that's always guided me. You see, in life, I have often felt like a latecomer. I've been late to parties, appointments, and all right, I'll admit it, I've been late for class and work a few more times than I'd like to confess. But today, I do not want to talk about the kind of lateness that is counting minutes on a clock. Rather, I would like to talk about something else. To start, let me tell you a little story. My mother arrived in the United States from Nigeria in the year 1987. She was 28 years old. She worked as a hotel dishwasher, saving enough money to send herself to nursing school part-time. She graduated in 1989 at the age of 30, pregnant with her first child. Throughout the 90s, she married and divorced and married again, had two other children, and moved from Chicago to Atlanta to Frederick, Maryland. Then, in 2001, when my mom was 42 years old, she gave birth to me, her youngest child. Life was quite all right. She had four kids, but was the sole breadwinner of her household. She worked night and day as a nurse for two different healthcare firms. For my mom, the toughest person I've ever known, this life was fine, but it was not sustainable. At 45, when most would be settling into the pinnacle of their careers, my mom decided it was her time to start over to pursue her dreams. A friend had become privy to a daycare that was for sale back in Georgia. Now, it was not my mom's dream necessarily to own a daycare, but rather to gain the freedom to become a mom. As her kids were growing up, she found herself missing out on those special experiences. Picking the kids up from the school bus, making dinner and hearing about their day, and attending those school events where her kids were recognized for their achievements. She jumped on the opportunity to become a business owner, knowing she would find the autonomy she always desired. We had our daycare from 2004 until 2010. My earliest childhood memories take place here. I discovered a love for play, community, salty snacks, and sustainability. Now I know what you're thinking. What a highly likely magical speech moment it should be that a three-year-old discovers corporate social responsibility and composting. <laughs> but it really didn't happen that way. Unfortunately, it was first through loss that I could understand the meaning of sustainability. It started with the flood. The year 2009 brought a series of environmental, economic, and social threats that inundated our family with worry. From September 15th, through the 22nd, a series of storms ripped through Georgia for seven days straight, without pause. At the height of the storm, 21 inches of rain fell in one day. 20,000 homes, businesses, and buildings across the metro Atlanta area sustained major damage, some of it irreparable. Unfortunately, our daycare was one of those sites. A combination of structural damage, mold, and extreme water saturation caused the center to close for good. The catastrophic floods of 2009 provided me with a foundational understanding of how environmental problems turned economic and then social. By the time all the daycare's physical damage was cleared away, the economic burden remained on my family. Both of my parents were now unemployed. Our home was facing foreclosure and my family was forced into bankruptcy. Some days I did not eat at school, fearful that my petition for lunch money would be my family's downfall. Though my dad tried to pick up some of the slack, he lacked the qualification to get a high paying job that could feed a family of six. In Nigeria, he was a doctor known by his first name, Abdullahi. Here, he was a stay at home dad going by his English name, John. Crisis forced my parents to adapt and make a plan. My dad would return to Nigeria to look for work. My mom would stay here, 
take care of the kids, and return to nursing. 51, separated, and a single parent of four kids, my mother was faced with another late life restart. This time, she had so much more to lose, yet everything to gain. She returned to healthcare, working three jobs weekend, day, and night, struggling to make it out. Like my mom, I was a latecomer in my own right. I was born at the end of August, a late arrival to that wonderful summery season. The youngest of four children, six, 10, and 12 years separate me from my siblings. Somehow, I always felt that I was, a late, that I was late to join my family. Because of our age differences, I grew up without my brothers or sister in the house. It was like I was an only child in some respects. My mom worked very hard to make sure I had the same experience growing up as my siblings, coming home on her lunch break to pick me up from the school bus and letting me spend weekends with my sister in her college dorm. Surrounded by such a sense of maturity and full development from a young age, I felt eager and equipped to grow up early. So, at the end of high school, I committed early to study computer science at a college in Boston. It made sense. I was always the computer kid growing up. My future was laid out in a series of four straightforward years, after which I would settle down at Google or Amazon or Instagram. But then, after my first year, COVID-19 came and knocked the wind out of all of us. Suddenly, nothing made sense, not even the person I knew myself to be. The world seemed to be descending into chaos very quickly. Systems and societies failed all around us. Inadequate responses to the pandemic highlighted structural decay on a local and global level. I felt like I was a child once more sitting idle at home while those around me suffered the consequences of environmental, economic, and social impacts. I felt called to action, though I didn't really know what I could do. However, just as my mom realized a decade before me, in troubled times where you feel like you've already lost so much, you stand the chance to gain everything. My quest to help in this new reality led me to psychology. A late night YouTube binge sparked my curiosity in the field and I decided to take an online course. As I delved into developmental psychology and came to know the neural pathways of the brain, I began to feel clarity within myself. Though there was still a lot left to be explained and much more to be healed and repaired around the world, my faith became restored as I turned to science. The pandemic also nurtured within me a curiosity about the, community, about the concept of community and how rapidly it was changing in the face of a global pandemic. I had always been fascinated by people and what motivates us to be who we are. More so, I always wanted to know what factors are at play when people are brought together, what creates community and why. I transferred to UGA in the spring of 2021. True to common form, I felt quite late, but I quickly realized that in Athens, there's much more than meets the eye. There's so much to do, so much to learn, and so many things that you can be. This is, a t this is a town that is truly driven by community. Since I was already late, I wasted no time jumping off the deep end at UGA. I rediscovered a love for play, community, and salty snacks, and once again, sustainability. I saw the greatest shows at the Georgia Theater and the 40 Watt. I met the greatest people, I played in a band, and I became a transfer ambassador at Franklin College, assisting hundreds of new transfer students like me to become connected with others like us. I ate the greatest food at restaurants like Cravings, The World Famous, and Punta Cana. And finally, I discovered the greatest secrets of life. Being a founding member of community revolutions like Techno Speakeasy Athens and Misfit Merchant Market taught me that you could mix a love for community and education together with enrichment and art to create beautifully safe environments that promote belonging. That realization led me to the sustainability certificate. Funnily enough, I was also late to discover the sustainability certificate. It was one year ago this semester that I took my first class in sustainability. I found the poster in the psychology building and was intrigued by the concept of solving big problems that threatened our communities on a local and global scale. It was a new world for me. Sitting in classes like People, Planet and Profit, Introduction to Sustainability, Christianity and sustainability and environmental psychology, I learned so much so fast. And just as quickly, 
I started to find evidence of those connections that I'd noticed throughout my life. As a result of the sustainability certificate, I learned to lean into the uniqueness of my varied experiences, those late starts and motivated arrivals. I found myself at home in a community where I knew I could belong. Once again, I became acquainted with the connection between environment, economy, and society. This time, instead of only seeing the problems, I began to see the opportunities. I joined the Office of Sustainability as their first ever project management intern earlier this year. I created lasting connections between staff and students by telling touching stories using technology. I redesigned their existing website and highlighted contributions by building a project portfolio. Through my work, I came to appreciate how committed these staff were to a mission of improving and beautifying the campus around them in different sustainable and innovative ways, all because they love this university and the people within it. In the maintenance project management office, I finally learned what it meant to be a bulldog. It is a community rooted in feeling, a shared acknowledgement of a promised destiny that could never be denied of you. And although I came into this community a little bit late, I learned that there's no timeline for belonging, only a journey with a destination and an assurance that you will always end up exactly where you're meant to. From my mother, she learned the same in her own time. In 2012, at age 53, she once again pursued her dream to become a business owner. She found her autonomy by opening a healthcare business that would service the most vulnerable members of her community, the impoverished, medically frail, and developmentally disabled. It was hard work, but it was work that she loved. She was finally able to focus on what she loved to do most, nurturing and mothering. She became her own boss, taking weekends and nights and days off as she saw fit. When I asked my mom about her late starts in life, she recognizes how interconnected it all was for her, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It, it all had to happen for her to get to this point. It was all a part of her journey. Had she not been on this journey, she would have never found maturity and appreciation along the way two motivational gifts that she said she found necessary to keep her going. Maturity, as my mom says, is knowing that you have a destiny, which comes with goals that you have to work hard towards. To her, maturity is also knowing when it's time to cut your losses and call it a day. Often she says to me, don't forget where you come from, an adage that reminds me that you can always go backwards if you need to. It reminds me that there's no shame in starting over again equipped with the knowledge sustained from your previous quests and journeys. As many of us embark on a new chapter in our lives, I offer a reminder, you are never too late. It is never too late to embark on a journey, propose a solution, find your community, or start a revolution. The path towards success will not always be linear. It may not even always be defined. But if you follow your intuition, your passion, and your motivation, you will always reach your destiny. Avidoya. Just have faith, be kind to yourself, do not be afraid to take a risk, and never be afraid to be a latecomer. Thank you all, and have a beautiful day.